Week 10 of the Paris Marathon training vlog and it's been another epic week. This week we reached 200 park runs. I run a half marathon as fast as I can possibly go and I get a rather stern email from a very arrogant Kiwi. Yeah, as I politely, gently explained in the email to you, <laughs> it's a stupid idea. Having run the Stenning Stinger Marathon the day before, which I'll link up there, my legs were in no fit state to do a hard track session on Monday. I did go to the track, I did five times 1,000 metres at marathon pace or just a bit faster than marathon pace. So no really, really fast running, just marathon pace effort for five kilometres. Now we can pretty much skip over Tuesday if you've been following the Paris Marathon training series then you'll know what happens on a Tuesday and if you don't go and have a look at my Strava. Strava is there for everyone to see, all my training sessions are on it so uh, go and check out Strava but Tuesday was an easy day. You see Wednesday is when the week really gets interesting because I went out running with Stuart Mills. Now Stuart has been following the Paris Marathon training series and emailed me a few days before quite sternly to tell me that I was doing it all wrong. But the thing is, Stuart isn't just any old guy emailing me to tell me I'm doing it wrong. Stuart is a really well respected ultra runner and has run in a GB vest before. Even though he's a Kiwi, he's been living in the UK for years and he's run in a GB vest. Let me let Stuart explain a few of his credentials to you. I've won Beachy Head Marathon eight times, won the Lakeland 100 twice. I did my best road marathon at London Marathon in 1995 when I was training for Ironman and that was 229. And you've run for Great Britain of course. Yes, yes. And that was at the 2011 at the age of 48 in the elite team. Not Guys, this is not the Masters, this is the Great Britain elite team. Yeah, as a world, the IAU International Association of Ultra Trail uh, World Championships. Stuart and I ran for about 24 kilometres on Wednesday morning and by the time we'd finished and had a cup of coffee together, he had convinced me to scrap my plans for the last three weeks of marathon training and listen to his advice. See, I had been planning to do two 100 mile weeks with a two week taper at the end of my marathon training block. And I'd also been planning to run a half marathon at marathon pace to check that my heart rate was gonna be at the right level for marathon running. After my run with Stuart, that was all out the window. I did do a hard interval session on Wednesday evening though. So as usual, on Zwift, we did the Paris Marathon interval training session, along with loads of other people who are coming to join us in Paris for the Paris Marathon. And we did an under over interval session, which we've done three times before in this training block. So uh, you've seen it before, five minutes under threshold, and then five minutes above threshold five minutes under threshold, and then four minutes over threshold, a little bit faster. Five minutes under threshold, and then three minutes even faster, then two, and then one minute. Thursday was my usual two easy sessions on Zwift, nice climbing session in the morning, relaxed, bag that badge session in the evening. So if you are watching this and enjoying it and finding it useful or interesting, please do hit that subscribe button. Click the bell notification icon as well so you're notified every time we upload a new video on the Film My Run channel. If you're a premium YouTube subscriber, then no adverts, but uh, if you're not, there might be one here now. And also, before we continue, just a quick thank you to my sponsors, Zwift, and also Noble Pro. Noble Pro treadmills, there's a link down below. If you're looking to buy a treadmill, then uh, Noble Pro have some of the best, most affordable smart treadmills on the market, please go and check out the link below where you can get a discount with my code. So I'm going to leave it to Stu to explain to you why he feels that doing two 100 mile weeks 
in the closing stages of my marathon training block is a terrible idea. Yeah, as I politely, gently explained in the email to you, <laughs> it's a stupid idea. Your, your body needs time to adapt and, and the physical training, is that you don't need that much, especially not two weeks out, or not even three weeks out, your last big week should ideally be four weeks out your last big week. So then you've got four weeks where you're beginning to ease down. Training, all training is, is making, so when you're on that start line, you feel that you are prepared to achieve the goals you want to mentally. achieve. Mentally, you feel you are mentally prepared. Stu also has some really interesting ideas about the psychology of running. And I'll let him explain a little bit about why a lot of your running confidence is not to do with how physically well trained you are, but how much you've got it up there. Endurance performance is only indirectly determined by your physical training. And that's because endurance performance is mainly determined by your emotion and your self expectations. And so what you're trying to do with your physical training is to improve your self-expectations so you feel when you're on that start line you feel prepared so that's what physical training is to make you feel prepared so it's like that quote um, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't you're right exactly at the start of the the build-up to a race i used to ask my athletes three questions what do you want from the race? Yeah. So what do you want to achieve? Why do you want to achieve it? Yeah. And how much, how much does it matter that you achieve it? So what is your goal? What do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? And how much do you want it? Those are the questions you have to ask yourself. One thing I really wanted to do was make it to 200 park runs and we did that on Saturday at Worthing Park Run. 200th park run, I wore two sashes. The video is linked right up there if you want to go and watch it. Had a lovely time and met an Olympian and an age group world record holder to boot. Week 10 was supposed to be another high mileage week. 100 miles according to my plan. However, following Stu's advice, I cut it down to 130k and we finished the week with the Surrey Half Marathon. And here's where Stuart's advice had the first major impact on my running. Because he told me to forget my watch, put it away, don't look at it, and run the half marathon as fast as you possibly can without looking at your watch. Now, he wasn't being gung-ho, he didn't say just go out like a crazy person. Do a measured effort, you know, think about your pace, think about how fast you're running and how far you've got to go. But, given that, run as fast as you can and do not look at your watch. So that's what I did. Now, given that I was originally going to run the Surrey Half Marathon at marathon pace and keep my heart rate as low as possible just to check that I was definitely on track, Doing it as fast as I could was a big change. And looking at my Strava, I'm not entirely sure I was confident enough to really go for it in the first 10 kilometers. It's a little bit tentative, which may mean that I didn't get quite as fast as I could have got. I finished the Surrey Half Marathon in one hour, 24 minutes and 10 seconds just 40 seconds shy of my half marathon PV. And I reckon I could have got it if I'd just been a bit more confident in the process. But I did it and I think that's what counts. I tried my best, my first time ever doing a race like that without looking at any kind of device to tell me how fast I was going. And big thanks to Stu, who got me to my second fastest ever half marathon and if it wasn't for my tentativeness, perhaps I could have got my fastest ever half marathon. And that bodes really well for Paris, a 124 half 
If you look at any of the marathon pace calculators, you'll see that's well on track for a sub three hour marathon. So let's wrap up with our usual look at how hard I worked last week. 12 sessions, three of them were hard efforts. So we had the Wednesday Paris Marathon training session on Zwift. I did a fast 5K in the afternoon on Saturday and then the half marathon on Sunday. Now the half marathon skews things a bit in terms of heart rate because I spent a lot of time in zone four during the half marathon. So you can see we've spent about an hour and 36 minutes in zones four and five. That equates to about 13%, which is an awful lot of time spent in zones four and five. And in terms of distance, we've done about 39 kilometers of fast, hard running. And again, that's skewed quite a lot because of the half marathon. Most of my running in week 10 was outdoors, 87 kilometers outdoors, 43 on the treadmill on Zwift. But it's all looking good. That's a bit too good, isn't it? It's looking ominously like I'm gonna have to actually try and do a sub three hour marathon in Paris. Oh my God. If you'd like to watch any of the other Paris Marathon training videos in the series, then click that link right there. That'll take you to the playlist. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Really appreciate it. Click the like button if you found the video useful or interesting or entertaining or anything. Click the dislike button if you hated it. And we'll see you on the start line next time. Cheers guys, have a great one.